Sri Bhagavad Ramanujacharya, traditionally, 1017 1137 CE, IAST, Ramanujacharya, Ramanud was a Hindu theologian, philosopher, and one of the most important exponents of the Sri Vaishnavism tradition within Hinduism. His philosophical foundations for devotionalism were influential to the Bhakti movement. Ramanujacharya's guru was Yadava Prakasa, a scholar who was a part of the more ancient Advaita Vedanta monastic tradition. Sri Vaishnava tradition holds that Ramanujacharya disagreed with his guru and the non dualistic Advaita Vedanta, and instead followed in the footsteps of Indian Alvars tradition, the scholars Nathamuni and Yamunacharya. Ramanujacharya is famous as the chief proponent of Vishishtadvaita subschool of Vedanta, and his disciples were likely authors of texts such as the Shatyayaniya Upanishad. Ramanujacharya himself wrote influential texts, such as Bhasya on the Brahma Sutras and the Bhagavad Gita, all in Sanskrit. His Vishishtadvaita qualified monism philosophy has competed with the Dvaita theistic dualism philosophy of Madhvacharya, and Advaita monism philosophy of Adi Shankara, together the three most influential Vedantic philosophies of the second millennium. Ramanujacharya presented the epistemic and soteriological importance of bhakti, or the devotion to a personal god Vishnu in Ramanujacharya's case as a means to spiritual liberation. His theories assert that there exists a plurality and distinction between Atman soul and Brahman metaphysical, ultimate reality, while he also affirmed that there is unity of all souls and that the individual soul has the potential to realize identity with the Brahman. Biography <inaudible> 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 Ramanujacharya was born in the village of Sriparambudur, Tamil Nadu. His followers in the Vaishnava tradition wrote hagiographies, some of which were composed in centuries after his death, and which the tradition believes to be true. The traditional hagiographies of Ramanujacharya state he was born to mother Kanthamathi and father Asori Kasava Somayaji, in Sriparambudur, near modern Chennai, Tamil Nadu. He is believed to have been born in the month of Chitra under the star Tiruvadurai. They place his life in the period of 1017 to 1137 CE, yielding a lifespan of 120 years. These dates have been questioned by modern scholarship, based on temple records and regional literature of 11th and 12th century outside the Sri Vaishnava tradition, and modern era scholars suggest that Ramanujacharya may have lived between 1077 to 1157. Ramanujacharya married, moved to Kanchipuram, studied in an Advaita Vedanta monastery with Yadava Prakasa as his guru. Ramanujacharya and his guru frequently disagreed in interpreting Vedic texts, particularly the Upanishads. Ramanujacharya and Yadava Prakasa separated, and thereafter Ramanujacharya continued his studies on his own. He attempted to meet another famed Vedanta scholar of 11th century Yamunacharya, but Sri Vaishnava tradition holds that the latter died before the meeting and they never met. However, some hagiographies assert that the corpse of Yamunacharya miraculously rose and named Ramanujacharya as the new leader of Sri Vaishnava sect previously led by Yamunacharya. One hagiography states that after leaving Yadava Prakasa, Ramanujacharya was initiated into Sri Vaishnavism by Periya Nambi, also called Mahaparna, another Vedanta scholar. Ramanujacharya renounced his married life, and became a Hindu monk. 
However, states Catherine Young, the historical evidence on whether Ramanujacharya led a married life or he did renounce and became a monk is uncertain. Ramanujacharya became a priest at the Varadaraha Purumal Temple Vishnu at Kanchipuram, where he began to teach that moksha liberation and release from samsara is to be achieved not with metaphysical, nirguna Brahman but with the help of personal God and Saguna Vishnu, Ramanujacharya has long enjoyed foremost authority in the Sri Vaishnava tradition. Hagiographies <laughs> 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 A number of traditional biographies of Ramanujacharya are known, some written in 12th century, but some written centuries later such as the 17th or 18th century, particularly after the split of the Srivastava community into the Vatikale and Tenkale, where each community created its own version of Ramanujacharya's hagiography. The Muvayurapati Guru Parampara Prabhava by Brahmatantra Svatantra Gr represents the earliest Vedakalai biography, and reflects the Vedakalai view of the succession following Ramanujacharya. Arayurapati Guru Parampara Prabhava, on the other hand, represents the Tenkalai biography. Other late biographies include the Yatirajavabhavam by Andrapurna. Modern scholarship has questioned the reliability of these hagiographies. Scholars question their reliability because of claims which are impossible to verify, or whose historical basis is difficult to trace with claims such as Ramanujacharya learned the Vedas when he was an eight-day-old baby, he communicated with God as an adult, that he won philosophical debates with Buddhists, Advaitins and others because of supernatural means such as turning himself into his divine self Sesha, to defeat the Buddhists, or God appearing in his dream when he prayed for arguments to answer Advaita scholars. According to J. A. B. Van Bittenen, the hagiographies are legendary biographies about him, in which a pious imagination has embroidered historical details. Topic: Historical background. Ramanujacharya grew up in the Tamil culture, in a stable society during the rule of the Hindu Cholas dynasty. This period was one of pluralistic beliefs, where Vaishnava, Shaiva, Smarta traditions, Buddhism, and Jainism thrived together. In Hindu monastic tradition, Advaita Vedanta had been dominant, and Ramanujacharya's guru Yadava Prakasha belonged to this tradition. Prior to Ramanujacharya, the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya was already an established organization under Yamunacharya, and bhakti songs and devotional ideas already a part of South Indian culture because of the Twelve Alvars. Ramanujacharya's fame grew because he was considered the first thinker in centuries that disputed Shankara's theories, and offered an alternate interpretation of Upanishadic scriptures. Some hagiographies, composed centuries after Ramanujacharya departed his mortal body, state that a Chola king, Kulathunga Chola II, had immense hatred towards Sri Vaishnavism. Knowing the evil intentions of the king, Sri Ramanujacharya's disciple, Sri Korathajwan persuaded Ramanujacharya to leave the Chola kingdom. Sri Ramanujacharya then moved to Hoysala kingdom for 14 years, wherein he converted a Jain king, Bidhi Deva to Hinduism after miraculously healing his daughter. Bidhi Deva changed his name to Vishnuvardhana. King Vishnuvardhana assisted Sri Ramanujacharya to build a temple of Lord Tirunarayanaswamy at Melakote which is presently a temple town in Mandya district of Karnataka. Ramanujacharya later returned on his own to Tamil Nadu. 
According to John Carmen, Ramanujacharya and his Shravaisnava disciples lived under the relatively stable and non sectarian climate of the Chola Empire, before its decline in the late 12th and 13th centuries. Ramanujacharya revolted against caste system, followed the same lines of Alwars and helped the people who were considered to be untouchables Madaga Dasa Mala Dasa, to get absorbed into the Sri Vaishnava Bhakti movement, encouraging them to attain spiritual enlightenment by teaching them Sri Alwar Divyaprabandham. Attempts on Ramanuja's life There were multiple attempts on Ramanuja's life. When he was a student under Yadava Prakasa, the latter grew jealous of Ramanuja's rise to fame. So Yadava Prakasa tried to get rid of Ramanuja during a tour to the Ganges in North India. Govinda, Ramanuja's cousin came to know of this sinister plot and warned Ramanuja who then left the group and escaped to Kanshi with the help of an elderly hunter couple. Later Yadava Prakasa realized his folly and became a disciple under Ramanuja. Later another attempt was made on Ramanuja's life while he was about to take charge of the temple affairs in Srirangam. The head priest of the Ranganathaswami temple, Srirangam did not like Ramanuja and decided to do away with him. Accordingly he invited Ramanuja to his house for having food and planned to kill him by poisoning his food. However, when Ramanuja arrived, the priest's wife saw the divine glow of Ramanuja and immediately confessed her husband's plan. This did not deter the priest who then made another attempt when Ramanuja visited the temple. He poisoned the temple Thirtham holy water and served it to Ramanuja. However instead of dying Ramanuja began to dance with joy. The priest taken aback at once realized his mistake and fell at the feet of Ramanuja. Topic. Writings The Sri Vaisnava tradition attributes nine Sanskrit texts to Ramanujacharya, Vidarthasangraha literally, summary, of the Vedas meaning, Sri Beshya a review and commentary on the Brahma Sutras, Bhagavad Gita Beshya a review and commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, and the minor works titled Vedantadipa, Vedantasara, Gadya Trayam which is a compilation of three texts called the Saranagati Gadiam, Sriranga Gadiam and the Shravaikunta Gadiam, and Nitya Grantham. Some scholars have questioned the authenticity of all but the three of the largest works credited to Ramanujacharya, Sri Beshya, Vidarthasangraha and the Bhagavad Gita Beshya. Philosophy <laughs> 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 Ramanujacharya's philosophical foundation was qualified monism, and is called Vishishtadvaita in the Hindu tradition. His ideas are one of three subschools in Vedanta, the other two are known as Adi Shankara's Advaita absolute monism and Madhvacharya's Dvaita dualism. Ramanujacharya accepted that the Vedas are a reliable source of knowledge, then critiqued other schools of Hindu philosophy, including Advaita Vedanta, as having failed in interpreting all of the Vedic texts. He asserted, in his Sri Beshya, that Purvapaksan previous schools selectively interpret those Upanishadic passages that support their monistic interpretation, and ignore those passages that support the pluralism interpretation. There is no reason, stated Ramanujacharya, to prefer one part of a scripture and not other, the whole of the scripture must be considered on par. 
One cannot, according to Ramanujacharya, attempt to give interpretations of isolated portions of any scripture. Rather, the scripture must be considered one integrated corpus, expressing a consistent doctrine. The Vedic literature, asserted Ramanujacharya, mention both plurality and oneness, therefore the truth must incorporate pluralism and monism, or qualified monism. This method of scripture interpretation distinguishes Ramanujacharya from Adi Shankara. Shankara's exegetical approach Samanvayat Tatparya Linga within Bhaya Vyatireka, states that for proper understanding all texts must be examined in their entirety and then their intent established by six characteristics, which includes studying what is stated by the author to be his goal, what he repeats in his explanation, then what he states as conclusion and whether it can be epistemically verified. Not everything in any text, states Shankara, has equal weight and some ideas are the essence of any expert's textual testimony. This philosophical difference in scriptural studies, helped Shankara conclude that the principal Upanishads primarily teach monism with teachings such as Tat Tvam Asi, while helping Ramanujacharya conclude that qualified monism is at the foundation of Hindu spirituality. Comparison with other Vedanta schools IAST, Ramanujacharya's Vishishtadvaita shares the theistic devotionalism ideas with Madhvacharya's Dvaita. Both schools assert that Jiva human souls and Brahman as Vishnu are different, a difference that is never transcended. God Vishnu alone is independent, all other gods and beings are dependent on him, according to both Madhvacharya and Ramanujacharya. However, in contrast to Madhvacharya's views, Ramanujacharya asserts, "...qualified non-dualism." that souls share the same essential nature of Brahman, and that there is a universal sameness in the quality and degree of bliss possible for human souls, and every soul can reach the bliss state of God himself. While the 13th to 14th century Madhavacharya asserted both qualitative and quantitative pluralism of souls, Ramanujacharya asserted qualitative monism and quantitative pluralism of souls states sharma ramanujacharya's vishishtadvaita school and shankara's advaita school are both nondualism vedanta schools both are premised on the assumption that all souls can hope for and achieve the state of blissful liberation in contrast madhvacharya believed that some souls are eternally doomed and damned Shankara's theory posits that only Brahman and causes are metaphysical unchanging reality, while the empirical world Maya and observed effects are changing, elusive and of relative existence. Spiritual liberation to Shankara is the full comprehension and realization of oneness of one's unchanging Atman soul as the same as Atman in everyone else as well as being identical to the Nirguna Brahman. In contrast, Ramanujacharya's theory posits both Brahman and the world of matter are two different absolutes, both metaphysically real, neither should be called false or elusive, and Saguna Brahman with attributes is also real. God, like man, states Ramanujacharya, has both soul and body, and all of the world of matter is the glory of God's body. The path to Brahman Vishnu, asserted Ramanujacharya, is devotion to godliness and constant remembrance of the beauty and love of personal God Saguna Brahman, Vishnu, one which ultimately leads one to the oneness with Nirguna Brahman. Influence 
Harold Coward describes Ramanujacharya as the founding interpreter of Sri Vainavite scripture. Wendy Doniger calls him probably the single most influential thinker of devotional Hinduism. J. A. B. Van Bittenen states that Ramanujacharya was highly influential, by giving Bhakti an intellectual basis, and his efforts made Bhakti the major force within different traditions of Hinduism. Modern scholars have compared the importance of Ramanujacharya in Hinduism to that of scholar Thomas Aquinas (1225–1274) in Christianity. Ramanujacharya reformed the Srirangam Ranganathaswami temple complex, undertook India-wide tours, and expanded the reach of his organization. The temple organization became the stronghold of his ideas and his disciples. It is here that he wrote his influential Vishishtadvaita philosophy text, Sri Beshiyam. Over a period of time, Ramanujacharya not only developed theories and published philosophical works, he organized a network of temples for Vishnu Lakshmi worship. Ramanujacharya set up centers of studies for his philosophy during the 11th and 12th century, by travelling through India in that era, and these influenced generations of poet-saints devoted to the Bhakti movement. Regional traditions assert that his visits, debates and discourses triggered conversion of Jains and Buddhists to Vaishnavism in Mysore and Deccan region. The birthplace of Ramanujacharya near Chennai hosts a temple and is an active Vishishtadvaita school. His doctrines inspire a lively intellectual tradition in southern, northern, and eastern states of India. His monastery and temple traditions are carried on in the most important and large Vaishnava centres the Ranganatha Temple in Srirangam, Tamil Nadu, and the Venkateswara Temple, Tiryamala in Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. The Statue of Equality in Hyderabad, planned by Chinna Jr., is dedicated to Ramanujacharya. Disciples Kadambi Ashan Tirakorugaiparan Pillan Nadador Aswin Mutaliandan Korathajwan Anantajwar Topic Names He is also known as Sri Ramanujacharya, Udayavar, Ethirajar, Yatiraja, King of Monks, Bhashyakarar, Gadagrahar, Thirupavai Jr, Ambaramanar and Lakshmana Muni. Topic. See also Hindu philosophy Subala Upanishad, a minor Upanishad repeatedly cited by Ramanujacharya, and influential to his ideas Yoga philosophy Vishnuvardhana, 